Um, welcome to another edition of the Raider Insider. I'm here with assistant coach Nick DeLoya. Um, we're going to sit down. We're going to kind of run through the lineup. Um, not specifically, you know, as far as who's it starting at what weight and stuff because, you know, they're still two weeks away, a week and a half away from wrestle off. So don't know that yet. Every kid gets their opportunity to go out and wrestle and compete. Um, but we're just going to kind of run through, give everybody kind of a shout out and um, Coach Deloy has been around every one of these kids probably for what the past five, six, seven years. Yep, I've seen him from elementary, junior high, now up in the varsity level, so it's gonna be exciting. So he he pretty much knows all these kids. He's been around them all pretty much every year, all day long. He, uh, I know, I I know Coach Deloy kind of personally. I know he shows up here a lot. I know last year he was at the field house probably two two thirty, and he didn't leave till eight o'clock at night. You know, he's probably almost doing the same thing this year. So, um, first kid we're going to talk about, or you can, you know, say some stuff about. He's a junior. He's a little undersized. Doesn't get to see a whole lot of action. But, you know what, he shows up. He, like I said, he's a junior. He's been wrestling ever since I can ever remember. He's 77 pounds, Clay St. Laurent. Clay is uh, Clay's an interesting dude because, uh, you know, he's extremely undersized for the varsity level. But... Every time we do get a chance to match him up with a exhibition match where our kid's 90 pounds or lighter, he's not only hanging in there, but he's usually getting the better of the kid. It's unfortunate that he's not a little bit bigger uh, or that they didn't have a letter, uh, lesser weight class, but Clay, is a, he's a tough kid, man. To be able to practice with kids 30 pounds heavier than him every day, it uh, says a lot about his character. So I love, love having Clay on the team. All right, next kid up is um, Taylor Wirtz. He's one of your upcoming freshmen. Um, I know you had him the last couple years in junior high. Um, what do you got? What do you got for him? What do you think about him? Tate's one of those kids that uh, the sky's the limit because he puts in as much time as anyone in the program. Uh, I saw him the last two years in junior high when I was down to junior high level, and every you could literally see on a monthly basis him just getting better and better and better. And now he's going to have, you know, even better practice partners. Uh, the fact that he's in the varsity room now, so I expect big things out of him. Uh, I'm not going to make any big predictions, but I think he'll definitely be not only not a weak spot on the team. I think he'll be one of the strong spots on the team. All right. Um, the next kid is um, Cole Aaron. I, I know I talked to Coach Clut for last week, and I mean he kind of feels the same way I do as long as everybody else. Cole Aaron has probably been one of the most consistent kids in the Brookville program in many recent years. Um, are you seeing the same thing as a consistency on, you know, <coughs> you, get, you know what you're going to get when he shows up for practice. You know what you're going to get out of a dual meet in him. There's no usually no big surprises. Is, is that what you're seeing in him too? Yeah, Cole, Cole is kind of similar to Tate in the sense that, uh, you know, even though he's a freshman, um, expecting big things. Definitely different styles. Cole is... Cole's more of a strength guy. He's really good at three or four things that, you know, if, if he gets a hold of you in those three or four things, he's just so good in those situations where he's just going to score points on you. Uh, he might not be as open right now as uh, Tate is. Tate's a little more open. But Cole, like I said, he's one of those kids that he's really good at what he does, and he's really good at putting himself in those situations. So, again, he's if he he's going to be in the lineup, and he's – a lot of people think, hey, freshman, you're going to take your lumps, and then, you know, there are going to be growing pains. But I expect big things from him, too, and definitely not a weak spot in our lineup. Um, next kid, I think, you know, quote me if I'm wrong, was a little bit of a surprise last year. Ended up 20-3, and three, um, took third place at district tournament, beat some kids that he lost to, moved on to regionals. He's going to be a sophomore this year, um, Devin Joyner. Yeah, he, he definitely surprised uh, people in the community, no doubt. Uh, I wouldn't say he surprised me. I, like I said, I, I got to see those kids in junior high uh, on a pretty consistent basis. And the, the, the one thing that a lot of times holds a kid back as a freshman when he moves up is the fact that he's a little bit overwhelmed by the whole magnitude of being up at the varsity level. But Devin Joyner is a scrapper. Okay, you could be you could be a senior in college, and if you know he puts the anklet on next to him, he's going to go after him. So that's a huge step, just having that mental edge on kids and. He's another kid. He's, he's going to take another step forward. So 20 wins last year. I expect an improvement this year. Um, next next kid, next guy is a junior, Brady Mindweezer. I know. I've watched him over the last two years. He's been one of the most exciting wrestlers at some points. He's wrestled some big matches. 
won some big matches for us. I mean, you're at one point, no, 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 and then the next thing you're jumping on your seat, yes, yes, yes. So, um, expecting the same things out of Brady this year? Yeah, Brady, Brady over the last two years, I mean, he's had people shaking their heads in the stands the next minute, you know, flying out of their seat. He's, he's, he can be down, he's a kid where he's down 14 and nothing, you better not look away because he can slap a cradle on you at any time. Uh, if he gets his hips on you, he's nasty. Just needs to improve at two or three spots, and I think he'll be a much more well-rounded wrestler. But yeah, he's he's never out of the match for sure. And another kid that he just provides real great depth at those weights, and he'll see plenty of matches. Um, the next kid's kind of exciting too. Um, I, I I think he's improved. Um, you can you can tell him, talk a little bit about him and how his improvements that came from junior high to um, varsity. He's sophomore, cool, clever. Cole Clever, uh, another exciting wrestler. He might have just named the two most exciting wrestlers in the program. He, I can, I can tell you about Cole. Whenever he was in sixth grade, and I was at the junior high level, I had a lot of people in the program telling me, uh, "This kid's, he's never going to quite get to where he needs to be." And uh, from the first second he was in that junior high room, he was, he was getting better on a weekly basis. I don't know if it was just. Mentally, he needed to mature or if he needed to get in a different environment. But, yeah, he surprised the heck out of uh, a lot of people last year, and not just in the program. He was beating kids uh, from the area that hey, he had never beat before. He had some big wins. He had uh, a big win over uh, Troutman from Clarion, Darren Brown from Kane. Those are, those are kids that he was not expected to beat by people in the district. So I expect him to take another step forward. and. Uh, He's going to have to uh, live up to the expectations now because he didn't have many going into last year. All right, next, the, the next kid is, and I mean, it's, it's kind of cool, and I'm sure there will be some battles in the room just like every brother is, and um, I'm sure at some point in time there might even be some fist thrown. Um, dang clever. I, 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 he's only a freshman, but, I mean, he's going to add depth to this lineup, I believe. What do you what do you got for him? Yeah, Dane's. Dane's going to be one of those kids. He's going to be similar to Cole last year. He's he's going to be coming into the the team with not a lot of expectations. He was he was a kid that uh, either last year or two years ago made it to his first uh, PJW state tournament, uh, kind of out of nowhere. Uh, took some big steps last year in the junior high. In the junior high room started beating kids that he was losing to earlier in the year. Uh, and then here with another year of maturity, I think. Once he gets to wrestle with his brother and Dalton and a few of those kids, I think he's gonna provide the kind of depth we need. And you can't you can't just have one kid at each weight. And I think he's uh, exactly what we're looking for. Well, you, you mentioned Dalton. Dalton Zimmerman is coming in as a sophomore. He actually broke the school record last year with 36 wins. Um, he was a District 9 runner-up. He was a third-place regional place winner. Went down the states. Really, actually, I mean, he, I think he went 0 and 2 down the states, but he was. As close as you could get with getting a medal without getting one. Um, you you look for big things out of Dalton this year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's not going to catch him in by surprise this year. He, uh, I was a little bit worried coming into this this season about his uh, conditioning because he was uh, banged up a little bit in the off season. But I can tell you from watching the first uh, three regular season practices, uh, he's he's ready to go. He's setting the pace and conditioning. Uh, really helping Cold Clever progress because they've been partners the first few practices. I just, uh, yeah, big things from Dalton. Uh, and to think that he's only a sophomore, is, it's exciting for sure. Um, another kid that I personally don't know that much about, I haven't really got to watch him wrestle that much, but I know you have because he's been in and out of the room the last, since he's been a freshman. Um, and I think he actually contributed a good bit as a freshman, started pretty much the whole season. Um, I think he's a senior this year, Devin Gill. Devin Gill's a kid that if he has his uh, his mindset on doing it, he can be a very uh, key contributor. I think uh, there's been times in the past where he wasn't fully committed to wrestling. Uh, and I don't know if that had to do with, you know, maybe his friends weren't into it as much as uh, he was, but I think I think he's got the right mindset. I got to uh, see him a lot in the fall. Uh, he pretty much every time said he was excited about wrestling. And like I said, with a kid like Devin, who's an athlete, that's a huge part of the battle. And he's he's another kid that's going to be real good depth for our team. 
Um, let's talk about your next kid. I mean, there, there's no secret. He's one of your, you know, most decorated wrestlers. I mean, he's probably done. Yeah, obviously, I mean, he's the only kid returning from a um, PIAA state medal. Brock Zockerl, he's, you know, had put together two pretty good years so far. He's coming into his junior year. I, I know he's very hungry for a state title. Um, talk a little bit about Brock Zockerl. Well, Brock is, you know, obviously he's extremely talented kid. He, uh, but going with being extremely talented, he, you know, maybe with two or three other kids in the program, he puts the time in to be, you know, at that all-American level, not just a state level kid. Uh, really, the sky's the limit for Brock. If, uh, if his health isn't a concern, uh, I know mentally he's where he needs to be. Physically, he's where he needs to be. And to me, that when he's when he's on his game, uh, he's as good as anyone in the country. So uh, to say I expect big things from him is yeah, that'd be correct. Um, the next kid, he's a senior, coming out for his first time. Um, Coach Julie also catches coaches soccer, so I mean he kind of knows him from soccer because he was a you know soccer guy. He did pretty well, I believe, in soccer. I really didn't watch much soccer, but Dakota Kallenberger, I mean, he's got some energy. He's really committed, from what I understand, and he's a hard worker. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the kids that you can take uh, uh, that's never been in a wrestling room and not can not be concerned about his conditioning. Uh, just extremely hard worker. Uh, he will, he could give you eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes. It really wouldn't matter what the overtime rules are. He's he's going to set the pace and conditioning. Obviously, he's behind the eight ball. The fact that he's a senior and this is his first year wrestling, but he's already made significant strides. He actually put a little bit of time in the preseason because he knew he was going to wrestle. Uh, yeah, he's going to be he's going to be one of those guys where if somebody's going to get hurt. We can move him around to about three or four weight classes, and he's going to be a tough cookie. So I'm I'm excited for him. Um, next kid is, he's a, he's a young guy, he's only a sophomore, I believe he's only been wrestling for a few years, um, Josh Maring, um, what, what do you see in Josh Maring? I know a lot of coaches that I've talked to see, think he could be, you know, something special. Josh Maring, I'm pretty sure it was his first year wrestling last year, uh, and just, yeah, he picked up on stuff extremely quick, uh, he... There's, he's another one that where he's got three or four things that he does really well that you wouldn't you wouldn't believe that he was a second year wrestler. Uh, I'm not quite sure he has the strength at this point in his career to be a top level wrestler. But as soon as he picks up on the strength, I mean he's got two more years. Uh, the technical side of wrestling and the, just the the mental the mental aspect, he's. He's right there, and it's extremely impressive only being a second-year wrestler to be where he's at. So I'm excited for him. Um, the next, the next guy. He's also a sophomore. He's a young guy. He's been in and out, but he, you know, has a dad. It's probably one of the most historic, historic wrestlers Brookville's ever had. Um, and Chucky Yell's dad won a state title. Pretty much almost pinned his whole way through the state tournament. Um, I, I, I've seen Chucky grow through the elementary and the junior high, and it seems like he's getting a little better every year. Um, where, where do you see Chucky? coming in and going his direction. Chucky uh, took a big step last year. He was a kid up until last year, uh, you know, he wasn't making the progress. I don't think that maybe some expected, but I think last year wrestling with some, uh, maybe Josh Maring and Dominic and a couple of those other kids, I think really made him improve a couple of aspects. But uh, not unlike his, uh, his, his father, who was one of the best wrestlers in this program, his hips are nasty on his shot defense and he can cradle you from anywhere so obviously he's not the level Chucky I was but uh, Chucky's got a lot of the same traits and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him grow. Alright the next kid I don't even know if like if you met him or not I know he's on the roster I know he's going to be wrestling he's a new kid transferred in you know to right at the beginning of football season it's a uh, Jacob Kesker. Kasker? How am I saying that right? I'm not sure if it's Kasker or Kisaker. I'm not sure. Uh, hey, have you met him yet? I did, I, uh, he introduced himself uh, yesterday. Uh, he uh, he isn't medically cleared yet. I think he gets medically cleared either tomorrow or the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, just from the little bit I've t talked to him, he's excited about the sport. Uh, doesn't have much background in it, but again, when you're when you're going to be put in the room with some of the guys we have in the middle, he's going to get better. So. And he's young too. I think he's only a sophomore, right? Yep. 
All right. The next kid, um, I believe, probably wrestled. <laughs> Well, probably one of the one of the toughest schedules last year, and um, Jimmy Miller. I know he like it seemed every week here, every time he went out in the mat, he was wrestling a state ranked kid, a state quality caliber kid, one of the studs on each team, and he pretty much held his own as a freshman last year. He's coming into a sophomore year. Um, do you see big things out of Jimmy this year? Yeah, for sure. Jimmy Jimmy's one of my favorite kids. He's I get to see him a lot through soccer and wrestling. He's a real good kid. Uh, I don't know if. A lot of kids could have taken what he took last year with the schedule he had. To say he had a tough schedule would be an understatement. When you're running into Cruz and Matthews and, you know, just literally towards the end of the season, he was wrestling a top five kid in the state every other match. It was pretty sickening the way it worked out. But uh wasn't surprising that, you know, came district time, uh, he was ready to go. And I, those kind of things just prepare a kid like that for – what is going to be the next level for him? Uh, you know, a lot of kids would have taken that the wrong way, either folded on the year or you know whatever, not reacted well. But he always stayed positive. Uh, I think he was probably almost. I think he probably had about 20 wins last year. Uh, definitely expect more than that this year. Uh, you're definitely not going to face the same sort of schedule that he had last year. Uh, Jimmy Miller for sure, big year. All right, then um, next guy we're going to talk about. He's a junior. <coughs> He kind of, I mean, in his mind, had an off season. In some people's minds, they would have loved to have the season he had, but in his mind, he had an off season. I heard he's come back hungry. Um, he was a third place finisher. He won districts as a freshman. Um, it got the regionals. Was a third place finisher in district last year. Got the regionals, but didn't get the states. Um, Zach Roman. Yeah, I would say it'd be, that'd be a fair assessment that he probably had a little bit of a disappointing season, especially in his own eyes, uh, which is the most important. He was. Coming off until until Dalton last year, he was probably coming off maybe the most impressive uh, freshman season out of anyone uh, in the program. So there was definitely a chance of having a little bit of a slide, a little sophomore slump. But yeah, he just he has a completely different attitude going into last year. He was, you know, he got done with football and he was kind of beat up and he was. 50-50 on wrestling, but you know he knew since he had such a good year that it was the right thing to do. This year he's been pretty much a leader. You know anybody that's kind of wavering whether they want to wrestle, he's the one talking them into staying around and setting the pace in the room. So when you're the guy, kind of guy that can win 30 plus matches as a freshman, and now you have the right mental attitude, uh, he can definitely be a guy that could uh, see his way into Hershey this year. So. I'm excited for him. All right, the next guy we're going to talk about, I believe he took off last year. He wrestled, up, I think, probably about the six or seven years before that. I don't know why he really took off last year, but he's going to be a senior this year in Austin Klinger. Um, what, what are you seeing in Austin? Austin's one of those guys where, uh, you know, up until uh, two, three years ago, he was, he was taking his lumps, and then he hit his growth spurt and just started completely rounding the around in the turn and yeah I was a little surprised he took the year off last year but uh, he's a really smart wrestler he's one of those kids where he's gonna get uh, he's not gonna be the strongest kid in some situations but he's gonna outthink you and we've traditionally had those type of kids in the, in the lineup and uh, he's he's out of weight class uh, that he could definitely be seeing significant time and uh, the fact that he's a senior uh, being one of the few seniors I think he could provide a provide a leadership that we kind of need so I'm excited to have him back. All right the next kid um he's only going to be a sophomore he kind of took off last year too um wrestled through junior high wrestled some in elementary actually took some coaxing to get him to come get into the room I think once we once he's in the room I think he's I think he's going to be sold on it um Jonas Sampson but he was because he's a big football guy too so he finished football a couple weeks ago. Yeah I don't even think Jonah realizes how uh key he is to the program uh we're pretty strong from top to bottom at the varsity level and in the middle and lower and then even when you get to the junior high the middle or lower but we're a little thinner on big guys and Jonah was one of those guys uh, coming up that we were relying on to be an anchor up top along with uh, a couple other kids we'll get to but yeah he you know he was a kid that was at J.O. States frequently uh, definitely a kid with all the talent he uh, I think Part of his thing is 
where is he at mentally? Uh, I think I think once he realizes he can be as good as we think he can be, uh, he'll be the guy, kind of wrestler we know he can be, which will be you know twenty match winner right off the bat if it, if he's where he needs to be. All right, next guy's Brody Zocker going to be a junior. Had a pretty good freshman year. Was thirty and twelve. Um, qualified for regional tournament last year. Kind of fought some injuries throughout the year. Shoulder injuries. Um, record wise, didn't really have the kind of year that maybe some thought he was going to come into, but you know, you can't really predict injuries and stuff. Still got it to regionals. I think he won a match or so at regionals, just quite didn't get to the state tournament. Um, do, do you see him taking that next step this year maybe to get to that state tournament? Yeah, Brody's going to be uh, Brody's going to be a leader in the room for sure. Uh, he's proven that here the last uh, first three practices. Uh, I think he's a kid that other people on the team look up to. Uh, him and his brother Brock and Brody are both looked up to, especially since we only have a few seniors. Uh, Brody's a, Brody's a kid that uh, if he just fixes two, three things, he's gonna be right there with the top five kids in the state. Uh, injuries you can't you can't predict, like you said. He was having issues with the shoulders, but he hasn't said anything to me this year about that. So if his health is uh, if, if his health is where it needs to be, uh, Brody's going to be one of the top couple kids on the team for sure. All right, the next kid's one of your, probably, well, actually is your most experienced senior, I think, um, <clears throat> and Taylor Cudworth. I know he come up as a freshman, made it through not even quite maybe half the season, got a shoulder injury, got a, sh you know, that shoulder injury, kind of got misdiagnosed a little bit and almost got into the summer of the next year and realized all he needed surgery and then missed all the sophomore year due to the surgery come back right before districts but being out of shape and stuff just couldn't get into the lineup and then last year pretty had a pretty good solid year for you know a kid that's basically missed two years of wrestling um do you see good things coming out of taylor and do you see him being a, one of the leaders this year as as your most experienced senior yeah i would expect taylor to be uh definitely in the running to be a captain on this team he's He's, he's the kind of kid that I, I see as a captain. He he works hard. He uh, tries to get others to work hard. Like you said, he was a little. He's been. He's had his career cut a little shorter than it should have been. Um, but last year he bounced back very well. Had some key wins down at the state team duels. Uh, found his way into regionals, and I think I think he would tell you that he'd be disappointed this year if he didn't make it to Hershey. Uh, hopefully, he can lead us there twice. All right, next kid is um, another new kid. He's going to be a senior coming out. He's a big football guy. I was just actually downstairs before I come up and seen that he was, um, um, you know, an honorable mention all-state linebacker last year. So I don't know what he's going to be at this year. I seen he had 120, 130 some tackles in football. So he's obviously a pretty good football player. But um, Nate Bonfordine, I know you haven't got to see him much, but I mean, since he's been in here three or four practices, what have you got to see out of him? Uh, yeah, Norton. He. Uh... <laughs> He's been a big surprise. Uh, I, did, I thought we were going to be starting from uh, the bear square one, but he's he's picked up on stuff extremely fast, and he's got athletic reactions to where he's already starting to pick up on some stuff. Uh, and then the fact that he's wrestling with some kids that are more experienced and they're willing to help him, uh, he's, he's definitely uh, progressing faster than a kid is supposed to at his age, uh, being a first-year kid, I think by the – Mid-season, he's going to be, you know, a 500 wrestler. At, even on our, even on our schedule, I'm pretty confident in that. It's it's impressive. Uh, so it's not surprising that he can do that at football. All right, the next kid. Um, I don't think he's got to see a lot of wrestling time coming up through the junior high, elementary level, and stuff. But he's a kid that seems to be in the room every year. And I mean, he has his ins and outs throughout the season and stuff. But um, Chris Bouchard. Chris is a kid that. You know he's 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 gonna work hard for you. Um, you know he uh, seems like seems like he was in junior high forever when I was down there. But uh, yeah, he's a kid. He's gonna work hard for you. He's one of the nicest kids, and uh, he'll provide depth up top, which we don't have very much. So I'm excited to have him up. All right, next guy, kind of um, me, me and Coach Cleffer, you know, had to had a little talk about him in Bryce Town. He's kind of that kid that you look at and you don't really see a whole lot there when he's standing there and he walks out in the mat and he comes out and wrestles a big buffy guy and he wins and you're like ooh. <laughs> so i mean he just kind of yeah i i, I kind of look at bryce town as a winner i just see him winning 
But what, what, what do you what do you see with Bryce, and how do you think he's going to fit into this team this year, and how do you think he's going to do, and how do you think he's going to move forward? Uh, yeah, me, me, Coach Clefford and Coach Ferrer, when he was here, talked about it all the time, how <coughs> it seems like the heavier you go in the lineup, uh, kids are more willing to self-destruct if you let them, and I think the, the best aspect of Bryce Down is he's – uh, wise beyond his years on the wrestling mat, he does not in good bad. He does not put himself in bad position. Uh, he can feel whenever another wrestler is going to put himself in bad position, and he is stronger than he looks. He he he, he might not seem like uh, like he's defined like some of those kids, but he's uh, he's strong. He's always in good position, and Bryce Town is going to be the an- anchor in our upper weights for four years. So. Yeah, he's a huge part of this program, and I'm excited to have him up here. All right, next guy we're going to talk about. Um, we got to see him once. Remember watching him wrestle once last year in a match. He ended up winning. It was pretty exciting. Um, he's he's going to be a senior. I think last year was his first year wrestling. But um, from talking to his you know heavyweight coach and stuff, he seems to think he can have a pretty good year in Tom, Tommy Smiles. Yeah, he's gonna need, he's gonna um, definitely be our heavyweight. He's the only guy we have up there. Uh, and Tommy was a first year wrestler last year. Uh, and when he got in the lineup, whether it was at a JV tournament or a couple big dual meets that he wrestled for, us, he had a huge win against Carlinsville last year. I remember, or he just wrestled the typical smart heavyweight match where he was in good position. He got off the bottom, and he was tough on top. Uh, you're not gonna see a lot of leg attacks from Tommy at this point, but. Uh, He's going to be one of those guys that he's not going to beat himself, which is huge at that weight, like I was saying last uh, with Bryce. Uh, Tommy, I'm excited to have him up here. He's Again, he's one of the nicest kids, and he's he's the kind of guy we need on this team. Well, it looks like um, you're going to have about 24, 25 guys in your roster this year. It looks to be probably one of the bigger rosters I think I remember in a while. Um, looks to be exciting year. It looks like, you know, you the, the schedule's changed a little bit, you know, a couple different tournaments you're going to go to and stuff. Um, looks like you're going to have a exciting year. I'm sure I'll be talking to you throughout the year, getting your opinion on how kids are doing and, you know, seeing where the direction of the team is and stuff. Um, thank you for sitting down and talking to me and giving us a kind of a preview of every wrestler that's going to be on a team. I appreciate it, man. All right, thank you.